Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Big Billy tomorrow. We started already, but... We hot today, folks. We hot like fat grease. <laughs> Bacon grease. Bacon grease cooking catfish nuggets. Popping on the stove. Shout out to Catfish Nuggets. Catfish Come Nuggets. Come on one of those days, people. Listen, you've tuned in, you're here. So settle in, get comfortable, and let's have an exciting time together. Um, I don't know where we're going. I never know. Me he neither. He t- well, one of us. I just be driving. I just don't have a GPS. Won't help us today. We just be driving. I, I rescind. You, Mr. Speaker, strike the record of what I just said about one of us knowing. I, I said, Mr. Speaker, because I've been watching the. Oh, the, the house. For the speaker yeah. of the house. Yeah, he's talking yeah. about the speakers of. I'm into politics, people. Yeah. Okay. In Not case just... y'all didn't know, you wouldn't believe it probably, actually, but you really believe is. it. What does that because mean? you have so many strong takes on different things that people probably wouldn't even think you'd be in it or. Well, that space. would that would mean that would yeah. lend that the I would way be that in you that. say things probably surprises. Them. Nobody in government speaks like you personally that I know. Oh yeah, that's true. You know. Well, they're not as... <laughs> exactly. You know, Erudite. that's my point. I was, I, was, I was thinking that word. Yeah, I got they're you. They're not as, you know. Yeah. I've known a lot of politicians. Mm-hmm. My first job out of college was working for a congressman mm-hmm. um, who was Erudite. Yeah. A, very, a brilliant man. Shout out to the Honorable Floyd Harold Flick. Shout out to him. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Love him, his family. Um, but I've been around a lot of politicians. These are not bright people. Yeah. These are not bright people. These are not... The Nadir. The, the high, chosen ones. No. These are folks who know how to get elected. <laughs> they just got elected. I was about you to know, say that. They know how to get voters. They don't have any skeleton. Well, they don't have. They know how to hide whatever skeleton they have in their closet, and they can get elected. I can never get elected to nothing. You don't think so? No. I'd vote for you. Well. I bet you all of our listeners and viewers would vote for you, too. Would you ever go into politics? Uh, like, front-facing. Ask me <laughs> what my dream job is. President of the United States. Did I tell you that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my dream job. And oh. you didn't even have to tell me. Why? Because I know you. <laughs> that's my but dream this job. this is the thing, though. What? So I watched, have you ever seen the movie Dave? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 93? Yeah. Well, he, well, he, so you know the he situation? Replaces, yeah. Okay, so for those of you that don't know out there, this movie Dave came out in 1993, and it's about a guy who is literally the most friendly guy, most loving, caring for people person you can imagine. And he's a lookalike of the president. Well, president ends up having an incident, I'm not gonna ruin the movie, and he ends up having to act as the president. And I was thinking to myself, what would you do if that ever happened to you? And they were like, you know what, because you got so many people that are powerful, that trust you, that you're close to, that know you. If something were to happen in our nation, I'm not wishing nothing on nobody, but to the leader you know, of our country. Mm-hmm. And they came to you behind closed doors, CIA, Secret Service, pull up to Doc's crib, and you sitting on the couch with your toes out, <laughs> and they knock on the door. I'm probably naked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, that's how I am at home. OK, so you're sitting on the couch naked, butt naked. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they knock on the door. You, are, you answer, we'll put you in a robe now. And they tell you that we need you, your country needs you. And, to what? Um, to do what? Be president? To be president and serve as president right away, Lo. No, you don't get to tell nobody. You don't get to do nothing. Are you? I'm replacing someone who look, looks like me. So no, not even having point. to do it like that. No, it's just going to be I'm doctors behind the scenes? In. No, you coming in front and center. And, and this is just, legal? Yeah. All right. Something <laughs> happens to the vice president and president. I'm down. What do you You're mean? You're down. You're going to do it. Listen, I am there. Yeah. Okay. I am there. I am, <laughs> I'm going to be in the White House. Doing whatever you want. Listen, walking around naked. I'm not even. <laughs> shut up. I would not walk around the house. Oh, it's your house now. You just, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even pack. Yeah. I would walk out the door, head to Air Force One. Mm. Okay. See, that, that one, of, one of my desires in life is just to fly on Air Force One. Just one time, huh? Just across the country. I feel like that's going to happen. Man. I want I'm to surprised have... it haven't, hasn't happened already, to be honest yeah. with you. Anyway. What, what would yeah. your slogan be? Would you have one? Yeah. Um, well, like, you yeah, wouldn't need one if you got just... It's going to be like five <laughs> words, you know. Oh, you got to have one, right? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I have to think about what my slogan would be. By the end of the show, you got to have a slogan for your For my campaign? Campaign. Mm-hmm. Okay? By the end. Okay. Well, you, Aaron, you gotta help help me come up with a slogan. All right. These two are. Would you paint the White House black? No. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the first thing white folks think black people are gonna do when they take over. Is 
paint the White House black. No, I'm not Could you imagine if Obama did that? <laughs> he would he would have been <laughs> like, damn he would have been unalived. <laughs> no. Yeah, that riot would have happened way sooner. Oh, soon, listen, huh? it would have been able to storm Capitol Hill <laughs> so fast. It would have been a whole different kind of riot. Okay? <laughs> and and but the, but but here's the here's the irony. The same result, everybody would have went home. <laughs> they would have took that. Not one person would have been arrested. Just like it was on January 6th. Don't hate me, people. Just acknowledge that I'm telling the truth. And on that and note, we definitely need to get started because we can't go too far in that nope. rabbit hole. <laughs> G-I-F. Jason Derulo, who is speaking out against sexual harassment claims. You sit here before you deeply offended. Live and interactive. I agree with Miss Hollywood in the chat. She says he's reading a teleprompter. Listen, I know bad acting when I see it because I've done it. I'm deeply offended. <laughs> I'm going to give you Angela Bassett deeply offended. And I'm deeply offended. Oh. <laughs> and I'm deeply offended. Guilty. On Fox Soul. <laughs> You see certain things get reincarnated in your children. My daughter is very much inspired by my wife's artistic pursuits. So my daughter started making necklaces. She makes what we call affirmation fashion. I tell her every day that your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. Your black is beautiful. And if there's anything better than being beautiful, it's being smart. And if there's anything better than being smart, it's being kind. And reaffirming that every day is our method of making sure her chin never drops. My dad wasn't around. And I remember riding a bike and falling off and cutting myself. And me never would just want to get back on it. People ask, how your children learn how to ride a bike? And you did. I didn't teach them. I just created an environment where they taught themselves. And all I had to do was be there. No one does nosy better than me. Photos. We found 378 photos. You he could what he do, because I don't know how he fell there. These are years of snooping, okay? I know you nosy too. Head over to Nosy where you can watch full episodes of the Karamo Show and be nosy with me. Story. Um, according to the BBC, this story over better in the UK, be better than what we were talking about. It will be, okay. um, and it's actually something kind of that I agree with for sure. Okay. So, according to the BBC in the UK, brain scientists suggest that people don't become fully adult mm -hmm. until they're in their thirties. Okay. Challenging the notion that adulthood begins at eighteen, which I'm not sure who truly agrees with that, but. Um, Research indicates that the brain continues to undergo changes until the late 20s, which, of course, can affect your behavior and your mental health and things like that. Okay. So um, they're arguing that defining a clear transition from childhood to adulthood is increasingly absurd, and it's more nuanced, a more nuanced process that occurs over three decades rather than just two. How do you feel about that? I think so for sure because I know <laughs> me at 18 versus me at 31 right now two completely well, different people. Well, listen, most 20-somethings that I know are really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> really. I'm not talking like academically dumb. Just really just, just dumb. No Life dumb. No common sense. Yeah. Their thinking is very provincial, limited, short-sighted. Yeah, ceiling's like right here. So, I mean, I, I, but I've always thought mm. this. I, I remember I said to my sons when they were, I don't know, teenagers, I said, so, you know, you guys are getting older, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. But we got a couple of uh, rules, agreements. Okay. I reserve the right to veto any decision in your life until you turn 25. 25, okay. I said, now, when you turn 18, I won't 
have a lot of input, mm -hmm. but I will have a veto. If you need to put your foot down. I said, at 25, I lose my veto. Yeah. I said, and you don't have to agree with it because this is just going to happen. <laughs> yeah. All right? <laughs> just letting you know. So they understood that, you know, he's not, at 18, he's not going to be involved, but, but, but I will veto something. There is still a line that can be crossed. Yeah. yeah. And so, because I understood that, because I had seen some of this research before. Okay. That early research said about 25. Yeah, that your brain doesn't yeah, stop 25. developing until 25. So, you know, I kind of prepared in my parenting for that. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I never had to use my veto. That's you good. Know, they that were, means you did a good job. Or, or were lucky. Yeah, or they just got away with it. <laughs> or, I, or I didn't know, yeah. which is probably the case. It probably is, um, but it's okay. But yeah, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. yes, I, I think the research is, I've lived it in yeah. terms of just dealing with younger folks mm -hmm. who, are, who, who clearly to me are just not. And you know, for me, it's like what well. they kind of mentioned a little bit about it being more nuanced. I feel like even now at this age, so for those of y'all that don't know, we just talked about, I'm 31. And a lot of people find that really hard to believe because of my appearance. But then when you get to talking to me, you can tell that I've had some years of my life. But um, what I've learned is that I've grown at different paces and different stages of my life. Like some people that they call, you know, late bloomers, early bloomers, things of that nature. I think it just depends on, you know, how you're raised and what you've gone through. Because some people go through the heaviest things in their life early on that force them to grow up faster than others. And if you've had a relatively easy road, which I think in some cases, in phases of my life I did have, where it was like I was well taken care of by the people around me and my mom. And that kept me away from having to grow up in certain situations that I didn't, you know, necessarily would have, wouldn't have had to go through in other worlds, so to speak. But, I mean, I, you know, I, I guess the point you're making is that I'm still growing, though. It's like I don't think it even stops at 31, 25, none of that. I'm well, like, I know 50 year olds that are still let's developing. Be, let's, let's, let's define the terms. Mm -hmm. Growth doesn't start, stop, rather. You're right. But at some point, you do become an adult. Well, your, your body's just developed fully. But your mind, your, mind, your emotions, mental, everything. Your, all of that. At a certain point, adultism kicks in, mm -hmm. and you know that it's there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you, to, to your point, you still, as an adult, continue to grow mm -hmm. because the goal. See, see, this is what, what's wrong with America. We we want to be adults. In 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 other cultures, the goal is to be an elder. Mm. So you grow, you go from being a kid to being an adult, and you want to go from being an adult to, to an being elder. an elder, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And the only way to get there is not just to have age, it's to have, have wisdom. Wisdom, yep. So I, th I just think our culture is bereft of wisdom, mm -hmm. you know? And to some degree, thank God, that's why I have a job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because but, you actually have it. Right, you know. <laughs> but, but it pains me to listen to people have these dumb conversations. Me too. You know, and... and just to be invested heavily, mm -hmm. emotionally. That's why I'm grateful to have people like you in my life and to have grown mm -hmm. up around mature people that value stuff much beyond what society deems as cool or the thing to be focused on. Stuff that in a week, it won't matter. It never does. You know, it, it don't usually matter later that day, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. You know, like the guy I was talking, talking about yeah. earlier on when we started, has the girlfriend in HBCU mm -hmm. and they're they going through whatever. So he tells my friend, I'm never going to find anybody else like her. She was my first this, my first that. My, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> my first this, my first that, my first this. Yeah. I'm never going to find anybody else like you. There's nobody else. In the, the, and I want to just say it's to so my friend, to to. I want to say to my friend, go tell your friend to shut the hell up. <laughs> what do you mean you're never going to find anybody? You are. <laughs> she is not the only woman in the world. At all. Sisters, you know, I love you to death, but I got to say this, all right? And it's true for the brothers. Mm -hmm. People, I make it people. People are like buses. Yeah. Every 15 minutes, another one's going to come along. Another one coming. <laughs> Walk into the mall, you, you're going to meet another one. Get on the bus, you're going to meet another Go to another country, you're going to meet another you one. Know, and, and it's, oh, she did this, she did this, she did. Absolutely. <laughs> she did all that. So, somebody else. Wait, wait. Somebody else can do that. But also, that might mean that you might need to adjust and bear with it. Yeah. If she's all that, then bear with it. Bite yeah. the bullet, go mm -hmm. through the hard time, mm -hmm. and hold on to what you got. Right. Don't tell me you got something special and you're willing to throw it away because she won't call you back when you want. Amen. 
All right? If she's that special, then, <laughs> then bite the bullet yeah. and go through the rough season. Because it ain't going to be kissy-kissy every day. Nope. Okay? If, if y'all were on the same campus, she, she'd mm-hmm. be doing something. My yeah. point is, it's the provincial myopic thinking. Mm-hmm. Trying to live your whole life in two weeks. <sighs> trying to have your whole relationship condensed down to two months. Mm-hmm. Right? We've been dating a year, and that feels like <laughs> 20 to us. Yeah. Well, let me, let me help you. It's not 20. It's a year. Yeah. And sometimes it takes two years for the real person to show up. Two years is what I think. Come yeah. on. By the time you hit two years, you Come should have on. an idea who you're dealing with. Come on. And, and in the case of this couple, they've been dating a year. Oh. So okay. don't tell me she's changed. <laughs> Just yeah. the real her. You finally discovered. It's finally showing up. Yeah. So you were dating one version. Here comes the other version. The one she presented to you first. <laughs> Here's the question. Can you love both of them? And there's going to be more than just those because two. Because both of them are part of who she is. And again, it goes back to what you're saying. Coming to the conversation from a different perspective with, with some experience, you have a different understanding of what people are capable of. Absolutely. And, and hopefully the adult brain brings to the table just the, the, the benefit of living and seeing. I've seen this. Mm-hmm. See, see, people, look at this. The only advantage to getting older it's the only advantage to it <laughs> is that you can you're, you're not you're not intimidated by things that people who have never seen certain things are intimidated by. Yeah, the first time right? something happens. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. lose something, you say, "I've lost that before." Mm-hmm. Right? Or something like it. Uh, exactly, yeah. and and so your response is different. Yeah. Whereas someone who's never gone through anything. Mm-hmm. Thinks this is this is the end of the world. Yeah, it's well, almost like getting in a fight. Yeah, it's it's when you it's, ain't never been hit before. It's exactly. It's just the end of Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, and you'll, that's and a you'll, good way to put it. And you'll be all right. It's just the end of Wednesday. But brains, I'm a lot less concerned about the development of people's brains than they are about the modern heart. So, where's the study on? At what point hmm. does the childishness of the human heart give way to the adult manifestations of I feel like heart. mine happened at 30, um, where I could feel that shift of not caring about a lot of the things that I cared about in my 20s and my teens just slowly start to fade away. And it was crazy because certain things did stay that I love and I know are always going to probably be there, but it was crazy. I'm talking about like just the whole being on the scene, you know, vibe, the whole feeling like I got to please other people, feeling like I got to do anything other than what I want to do. I feel like once I hit 30 and I looked at my life and I started to evaluate, am I where I want to be? You know, just starting to gauge that based off of perspective. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and I didn't like what I saw in certain areas. Mm -hmm. It was almost like, I ain't got no more time to waste. I'm changing that right now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like 30 gave me enough time to see what I did throughout my 20s and start to get a fair evaluation of who I actually am now. Because that time period from 18 to 30, 12 years, that's a long time. But those periods, I was I feel like I was like three or four different people. Well, you probably were more than that. You know? And by the time you hit 30, it's almost like you know exactly what you like, what you don't like. Not always. <laughs> Not always. Not always. But you start to get more of a sense yes, of it. Yes, you're coming into mm-hmm. it more. You're exactly. Be, you're being, and, and, th- and 30 now, it's really 22. Yeah, it's the new, yeah. You know, and 18. 30's the new 20. You know, you know that Jay-Z song? <laughs> no. And, oh, it's and, a name. And, 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 <laughs> and 18 is really nine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. In this generation. Yeah, because every, everything is sort of emotionally, psychologically regressing. Absolutely. So we, we would hope that at 30, you would have a better sense. And I, I guess the point that we're mm-hmm. making is that it's, it's not about the chronology of your life. Mm-mm. The number is not the thing that sort of defines where you are in the scale of maturity. Yeah. It's your ability to be self-aware. And to your earlier point, um, it also depends on who you're around, who's nurturing you, who's not nurturing you. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot of people I see on TikTok, and I think to myself, <laughs> y'all should have spent a little more time with your grandparents. <sighs> and you probably should have listened a little more. Hey, man. You so on, you on here acting like this is the end of the world. No, for real. Before we um, go to break real quick, I want to ask you, yeah. at what age did you feel undeniably like an adult? Six. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> um, 
No, I've I've always I've always been more more mature more mature for your age. Yeah. So would you say in your like teens you felt like I was like uh probably closer to eighteen for you then? No, probably younger. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably okay. more like sixteen, seventeen. You know, I think. More so with your generation too. My mom was, I feel like, like that too. And um, yeah, my generation was pretty crazy. Yeah, but y'all had to grow <laughs> up faster than a lot of other people. Being black in America, I know. Yeah, especially. no, but I'm, I'm just saying, generationally speaking. Yeah. We were we were out of our minds. Y'all was nuts. <laughs> we were out of our minds too. It sounded you know, like we it. were selling drugs. Y'all went through the '80s, and the Smoking '80s was crack, just a whole doing crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, '70s but, and '80s. But, but we also went to college. <laughs> yeah. My generation went to college in greater numbers. Than, than any other than generation. Any other generation, wow. Because it was more that. open for us to do mm -hmm. to go to college. Less expensive, um, was it, back then, too? Well, I'm sure. I mean, okay. just, just has the nature just, of, of, of economics of it. Mm -hmm. But more so, I would say this, and then we can go to break, that when I was younger, I was negotiating a whole series of mm -hmm. things. So I didn't have time to sit around and worry about who didn't like me, mm. or who didn't who didn't call me back, or I, listen, I, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got listen. I got I got ten cent in my pocket. Yeah, and this got to last me a week. I got stuff to do. So we, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I was just very one of my gifts. People think my gift is talking. It, maybe it is, but what, my gifted my gift is clarity. Yeah, clarity and focus. I, I can cut through the foolishness very quickly and get right to the heart of the matter. And that's my invitation to all of you. Cut through it, people. Whatever age you are, clarity can be yours. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> what a disaster. You're a disaster. This is a disaster. You can't be ready for every little disaster, but you can prepare for a big one. Make an emergency plan today. Welcome inside the black box. So you guys ready to have some fun? Forget the acting studio. I'm here with you guys. Creativity will find its way. It doesn't matter what the ethnicity is. Television and movies are the mediums of stereotypes. Just because we all have the same color don't mean we have the same experience. Your uniqueness is your greatness. Welcome inside the black box. Every Monday on Fox Soul. T-G-I-F. Lil Wayne was not pleased with the reveal of his wax figure. He tweeted, sorry, Wax Museum, but that bleep ain't me. Live and interactive. Brittany T said, that ain't Lil Weezy, that's Lil Asthma. Hold on, call it. You, you gotta see what Poppy said. Hell, the wax figure looks cleaner and better than the real Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Serving up all the tea. You so messy, Q. You are. <laughs> nah. Join the chat on Fox Soul. Yeah, I don't make the comments. I just read them, honey. Oh, God. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. Yeah, if I was 6'5", Doc, I'd be playing what for the you, Cleveland six, Cavaliers. Two? That's exactly what yeah, I'm thinking like about. Yeah, like 6'2", 6'3". I mean, you you do know you're like abnormally tall, right? Like not six two. Is, no, yes, you. I'm taller than average. You're not average. LA, but like six two is like five nine five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were in like the ninetieth percentile. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm average. Tall, tall. I'm like five ten. Yeah. Five, I just grew up in a world that made me five, feel smaller. Yeah. Intellectually, yeah, like you're six foot five. You're old chai and eight feet tall. Yeah, that's right. But I was like the third shortest on my college team, so I was always the little one. Oh, yeah. I was literally like the third shortest. Oh, <laughs> so, we don't feel sad. 
It's all good. Yeah. The puberty hit. Yeah, and then yeah. puberty hit. And I was I was actually really short too. But anyway, are you? Yeah, how tall? You're taller than me, aren't well, I'm you? I'm like six four, but yeah, I, was I got Lyme disease in one summer. I didn't move for like six months. And you I had Lyme disease? Yeah, I had so a teammate I was like that completely had. down, and I grew like six inches in like uh, over the summer. Like, That's what the hell crazy. happened? I'm like, I don't know, but everything hurts. Your knees were probably on <laughs> fire. Everything. Yeah, hurt. I already yeah. know. <laughs> I had Bell's palsy. Half my body was shut down. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. You think you know someone? People be going through. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Interesting things happen during the break. Always. <laughs> Always. We're going to do a show called During the Break. <laughs> Man, we could literally make a show just out of our outtakes. Yeah. And, uh-huh. we, and we would get sued. Yeah. <laughs> we would probably never have a job again. Yeah. Let's not do that. <laughs> let's yeah, not no, do that. Let's not. <laughs> Oh, at least let's have Aaron edit it. Yeah, it got, started off as a good gotta, idea. Take some of the logos off. Right? Yeah, yeah, Aaron, we gonna get you on that. This is real. There'll be we a lot of blank. First, there'll though, be a lot of bleeps and blank space, yeah. spaces. Say that again. I didn't hear you. There'll be a lot of like blank bleep outs. A lot and of spaces bleeps. In It'll it. just sound like a Jerry <laughs> Springer. <laughs> all bleeps. A lot of bleeps. <laughs> because of you, you the one. You ought to hear him during the break. Y'all gotta remind me of which words aren't like. It's like they get to pick and choose which word for the words. No, there's really only one word you have a problem. with. Yeah, right. That you one you just spelled one, out. I can't just, oh, yeah. like, That's a complete obvious case. <laughs> You're right. Good call. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I just gotta remember that one there. All right. So you ready for this next story? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> You're not though. So apparently, according to the New York Times, at least we got a newspaper I've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the BBC? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's not a newspaper. But go ahead. <laughs> You didn't get that joke at all, and I'm so glad you didn't. All right. Um, according to the New York Times, apparently, I, I got what you. Yeah, I, I, we're not I, I, going back to that. We're moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> according to the New York Times, for the third time, <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith been all over the internet lately. Oh, yeah. She has claimed that her and Will have been separated since 2016. Yes. Does that come to your surprise or not? No, not at all. I know it doesn't. No, and not at all. Please tell the viewers why. Um. So let me. I. I for full disclosure, I don't know them. Mm-hmm. Um. I think I might have may have met them once, maybe. Mm-hmm. Which is surprising to me, actually. But I don't. So whatever I say is from the outside, mm-hmm. someone who doesn't know them. My observation of Will Smith has been for a while that he's not particularly stable. You did say that after the yeah. Oscars. I, and I, what, I, what I mean by that is it, that's not a, uh, uh, an assessment of good or bad mm-hmm. or good or evil. He just seems to me to be just all over the place. Like something's boiling inside. Yeah, almost. emotionally. Because mm-hmm. um, when you chase the rush, and the thrill, that that comes from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so my point is, I'm not surprised because I had a sense that something was going something on. Something was going on, and that makes sense. It right. adds up, huh? It, it adds up yeah. why he would sort of be doing all of this stuff to sort mm-hmm. of fill this void, to discover, um, to deal, to cope with what was mm-hmm. going on in his marriage. F- so first let me say that I wish them well. Yeah. Me too. Together or separately. Mm-hmm. Um, they've given a lot, and they brought a lot of joy and happiness and beauty, mm-hmm. and so they deserve to have some of that come back to them. Absolutely. Uh, and I know a lot of people are beating up on Jada, um, but you don't know a marriage unless you're in it. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what went down, and we don't know why. Excuse me, I almost died. <laughs> why, 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 why they went through what they went through, we have no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the thing that concerns me is we didn't need to know all that. Mm-hmm. I want to know who was asking all of that. Hey, well, we just don't, let me tell you something. I have, I have a, my private life is my private life, right? You, and you, you know more about too. my private life than a lot of people yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's my damn business. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't concern you, then it's none of your business. Yeah. I don't feel any moral obligation to share with some random stranger 
anything, let alone the world. I just, I guess that's why I'm, I'm like a dinosaur when it comes to that. In stuff, this order, in this digital culture, yeah. Where every time you fart, you, you want to share it mm-hmm. with people, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't understand that. So yeah. my, I don't get Jada needing to tell us all this. Well, she's wrote a memoir, you know, that released October seventeenth. Called Worthy, and a lot of these clips are just from her doing promo about the book. But I of course, it. it's like I feel like they got to a point where the speculations and all of the rumors and all of the things got probably so high that they felt like, all right, let's clear the air and at least set the record straight on some of this. Clear stuff. the air for who? The I don't know. The two of you them. know. Exactly. Your kids know. Your mom knows. And that was what I was going to get. Who are you get clearing at? the air mm. for? I was some random it. idiot walking down the street. The blogs, all of the people no, that are following the why, 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 why feel any obligation to give them clarity? And they didn't up until now, which is crazy. You know what I mean? And now it's almost like overload, where we're like, all right, gee. I, I just, listen, <laughs> I, get, I get if you felt like you were being disingenuous with the public, mm-hmm. and now you feel like because you were disingenuous, you now want to set the record straight. Mm-hmm. Um, what but, about their role as being role models for other people and wanting to be clear on who they actually are as opposed to having people form this own narrative? But people are still forming their own narrative. You Already, give, you give yeah, people the right. truth and then they make up why you told the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah. the you, blogs are only going to pick and choose what they want to post, too, that's going to get nev- a You're never going to stop people from forming their own narrative. You're right. I think that it make, the only way it makes sense to sort of tell us all this is if you are atoning for giving a misimpression. I hear that. Right? Yeah. Then, okay, I, maybe, maybe I get that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you're writing a book and it's a memoir, mm-hmm. I, listen, I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just wish them well. Yeah. I think they deserve to be happy like everybody else. I do. Um, and I know people are, you know, I've seen people have these real harsh things about Jada. Just because and they... how she's emasculating Will Smith yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And you, I mean... You, if he doesn't feel that way, then... Well, this, the point I'm making is we don't know exactly. if he feels it that way. Exactly, it doesn't even matter to... I don't know. The rest of the world's opinions are just going to be that. I just don't know. I, I just... I just and it sounds like he's supportive. They're supposed to be coming out with something together, apparently, too. But, well, and, again, but that's, that's my other problem with this. This is turning into an industry. I think they're just mm. making money off of it. Yeah, that, that's, that's my other problem. Yeah. So first he writes a book, mm. and everybody was telling me how great the book was. Mm-hmm. And then I, was, I read it, and I thought, not so great. Yeah. But like, it's all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I felt like in his book, there was something missing. He wasn't telling at all. Remember I told you that? Yeah, you did. I was like, there's something, there's something about this that's missing. Yeah. And now she writes a memoir. Filling in the blanks. Fill, filling in the blanks. <laughs> And now, if, if what you say allegedly is true, they're going to come out with, this is turning into something. Stop it. <laughs> I need you to stop. Here's what I need. People, I have no, no, give me, put me back on the wide camera. <laughs> I have no say-so with anything, but this is just me. All right, Will Jader, this is, this is, this is, uh, I'm, I'm older than both of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I am. This is Uncle Sean, okay? Here's what I need you to do. Will, I need you to get back to acting. <laughs> get back to focusing on being a good actor. Because your last few movies, not so much. Mm-hmm. You're gifted, son. And you got something the world King needs King Richard to. was great, though. He killed King Richard. I'm, I didn't think so. You didn't think so? I'm in the middle of talking to Will. <laughs> Get oh, back Will to fans. focusing on that. Back, Get back to loving and mastering your craft. And Jada, you do a great job with Red Table Talk. Get back to the things that sort of make you alive and why you were sent here. God did not send both of you to this planet to sit around and talk about your marriage in public. Or, or to profit off of it. He sent you to this planet to do what you guys have been doing for years, and that is creating beautiful art and opportunities for people to think differently and to experience joy. Get back to that. Get back to why you were sent here, because you're not getting any younger. No. The sun is setting, and you don't want to look back on your life and make this the final statement about your time here. Yeah. This whatever's going on between the two of you, mm. okay? How about we get back to the bigger things? Yeah. The, 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 the reasons for our existence. The raison d'etre. The raison d'etre. 
Right. God didn't send us here to talk about we've been separated for 16 years. How about this? I don't even care. <laughs> I know you don't. I don't need to know that. Yeah. But I would, I would love it if you made a great movie that made me want to be a better person or mm-hmm. whatever it was. Do that. And shout out to their kids. I feel like they raised such an amazing family. They're doing... See, I don't know if the family's amazing because I don't know their family. I've met Jaden. I've met Willow. Okay. And my first... Have you had dinner with him? Not dinner, but I've been around Jaden for a whole night. So I've been able to actually... A whole whopping night. But I've seen, like, his (laughs) presence and felt his energy. I'm I'm being facetious. I know you are, but I'm just saying. And I know how much he does for other people. That was what I was getting at. They seem to be, you know, doing more for other people than they, you know have to and I love that because they were raised in a way that makes them value I just want them to do this this is true for not just them Mm -hmm. everybody in this room I want people to do what they were born to do yeah and not waste time talking about stuff like this that don't yeah yeah you're right I hear you that was how they got here legacy that's how they got here just focus on your legacy Mm -hmm. yeah focus on what it is you're trying to say with your life and let people who don't have lives talk about your life. That's what they do. But you don't need to sit around and do it. Yeah. And they've done a good job of it up until now, I feel like. You know. Yeah. And now it's just like the levy broke. Oh, I, can't, I can't have that on camera. <laughs> yeah. You about to get a suit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, um, you know, I think we could take this to a quick break. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I, listen, I'm sorry I don't have... I wasn't expecting all of that. I wasn't expecting what you even gave me, to be honest. Because I, at a certain point, it just gets to be, so come on, y'all. So before we go to break, yeah. what kind of example do you think this sets for ki- not their kids, other people that look up to them as role models? What do you think the impact that they're having is going to ultimately have the, on them? The impact I hope it's going to have is that it shows everybody, that no matter who you are, Loving another human being is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life. Mm. It's easier to love a cat or a dog or a mouse than it is to love a man or a woman. Mm. And if, if that's what comes out of it, then they've done all of us a great service. You, you can have, so I saw one of the interviews, she said she was at the height of her life. All, mm-hmm. all the money, all the fame, all the attention she could want, and she was miserable. Mm-hmm. Huh? Prince Harry was living in a palace with servants. Miserable. Right? Miserable. Mother Teresa was living in Calcutta among the slums, the homeless, the indigent, the diseased, and she was happy and fulfilled. Thriving. (laughs) Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? I definitely follow. Your bank account and your your station in life and your Mm -hmm. stature does not always equate to the degree of your happiness. You're right. Rarely does. So the lesson to all of us is you can be, remember, everybody wanted to be Will and Jada goals, right? Mm-hmm. I, want, I want that Will and Jada love. Really? Do you want the Will and Jada you love? You never even knew what that was. Right. You want something you don't even know what it is. You're looking at it, making assessments about it, and now you're, now you're speaking out into the universe mm-hmm. that you want that for yourself. Mm-hmm. How about you say, I want the love that life has for me. I only want what has been ordained for me to have. I don't want Will and Jada love. I don't want Barack and Michelle love. I don't want Oprah and Stedman mm-hmm. love. I don't want Jay-Z and Beyonce. Mm-hmm. I want your love. What's a good gay couple? I can't think of somebody. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to conclude everybody in my yeah, analogy. I know, I know. I want the love that's for me. Yeah. And let that be enough. And stop wishing that you could be somebody else. Because it ain't going to happen. And if it did, it would probably kill you. Can't handle the weight that some people, your shoulders weren't built to carry that. So rejoice in your own journey. Amen. And, and, be, good, note, and be happy. And that, it's okay. On that note, we're going to take a break. I know. I just went a whole thing. I don't that was know. good, though. We're going to be right back. I love that. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. 
Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just bougie. I'm just too poor. <laughs> Every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. TGIF. Lil Wayne was not pleased with the reveal of his wax figure. He tweeted, sorry, wax museum, but that bleep ain't me. Live and interactive. Brittany T said, that ain't Lil Weezy, that's Lil Asthma. Hold on, Carly, you, you gotta see what Poppy said. Hell, the wax figure looks cleaner and better than the real Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Serving up all the tea. You so messy, Q. You are the Join the chat on Fox Soul. Yeah, I don't make the comments, I just read them, honey. Uh, my mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the Earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back, everybody. We got our headphones on. Know what that means. And technology. <laughs> technology. Technology. So, and what, what is this? We got us some videos coming. This the first one looks like it's going to be, looks like it's going to be funny. Um, <laughs> this first check, I can only imagine. Let's dive into it. Cause, I didn't even see that. Yeah, we got first some. Check. We got some stuff. Reading is fundamental. Out. It is. Learn how to. Whoa. First check ever in life, boy. We'll see what it do. Hey, wait, 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 we ain't got to say how much it is, man. See his face when you open it up, man. Wait, wait, first, wait, Jojo. How does it feel opening up this first check, man? Oh, come on. I'm uh -huh. just open it up. All right. What you You need this. You really don't. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was expecting to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are your face like that, Jojo? It's probably the taxes. It's probably <laughs> taxes. <laughs> would you expect it more? Because you're 18. Jojo, would I'm you so expect sorry. it more? <laughs> How much you getting? I got this thing on now. Jojo, where you going? How much did y'all get? Oh, yeah, they took out taxes, Joe. Welcome oh. to the world. What? <laughs> Joe. Yeah. Where you going, man? It's, it's a part of life. Oh, you mad? He, oh. Yeah, they know the right here. <laughs> so. Poor little guy. It's funny how everybody in the car understand completely. They like, I don't know why you was that hype about it. I want to know, why, but ain't they show us the amount? I mean, it doesn't matter. We we, know, we've man. all been there. I kind of want to know. I get residual checks, so I need to know. Them residual checks sometimes, I done got a check for 18 cents. I'm like, y'all spent more on the paper than you did on the damn check. Okay, let's not make this about. Hey, we don't our, strike for ourselves. a reason. We don't strike for a reason. Was there Bad guy was, for a strong? Uh, whoa, was there was there a <laughs> was there a point to this? I don't I don't. Oh, was there a point to it? Um. Oh, we're on the show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot we were here. It? Um. Do you remember your first check? You totally were. You totally. ADHD kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all just see that? Or was that the only one? just having fun. People. I was promoting hold the on, sad guy on, for hold strike. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. People, <laughs> if you can rewind, rewind right here and go back and watch that whole thing. He was no longer in the room. <laughs> I forgot we watched the video and everything. I was just thinking about wow. this strike and how I got 18 cents for a check he, once. That's I, crazy. And, and you notice, I really tried to pull you, you out. You did, you did, and I stayed in it. I tried to reach in and grab you, like, let's not make this. And then you wouldn't come, you wouldn't follow. Okay. What do you think the most bougie state in the United States is? Is this black bougie or white bougie? <laughs> There's a difference. McMillan and Mara. I'm not black bougie. I'm trying to be. <laughs> You're just boost. I'm just too poor. 
every Thursday. Listen, if I had more money, I would be so bougie. You black bougie adjacent. All your friends are black bougie. Exactly. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living vicariously through them. Meet the scam. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Inside the black box. So you guys ready to have some fun? Forget the acting studio. I'm here with you guys. Creativity will find its way. It doesn't matter what the ethnicity is. Television and movies are the mediums of stereotypes. Just because we all have the same color don't mean we have the same experience. Your uniqueness is your greatness. Welcome inside the black box. Every Monday on Fox Soul. Want the best of Mari? Kev, you are not. Want the best of the Steve Wilco show? Would you take Dave back if you left Dave? <laughs> Want the best of Jerry Springer? Just download Nosy on your mobile device or stream it on Pluto TV, Samsung TV, or the Roku channel. Until next time, America. So this, you guys remember my first check? Yeah, do you remember it? Let me tell you something about that little boy that I don't understand. Hmm. I was so glad to have a check. At all, huh? I don't, it's, I don't, it's, it's these, it's these postmodern expectations. <laughs> you was way too excited going into it yeah, anyway. Yeah. Listen, I was so glad to have a damn check. Yeah. Lily, you take what you want to take. I'm, let's leave me something. with something. Yeah, yeah. You it's know, and, nothing. and so, what? Now, here's what I did when, because that happened to me with my sons, mm -hmm. and I explained to them, they were, they were, you know, they kind of had a similar <laughs> reaction. But I, they said I make, I said, come on, let's go outside. We went outside. I said, you see this street? They said, yeah. Your taxes make this street possible. Mm -hmm. I said, come on, let's go down the street. Pops, really? <laughs> it, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a question, little boy. Yeah. <laughs> you see that light that works? Your taxes. Mm -hmm. You have to pay to live. Mm -hmm. In a society. I feel like we shouldn't have to pay as much as we do if they're giving all our money away to okay. other stuff. That's but a right. different conversation <laughs> yeah. that you can have you can have on the next a show. A whole lot of taxes, not a whole lot of paved roads in Los Angeles. That's all I'm saying. But you know what? Bef before you take that too far, because you sound really social media right now. I do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just a driver I, in Los Angeles. No, right no, no, no. Huh? Go to, go to some other country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen. I need you That's to focus. You. I'm sorry. You're killing me right now. <laughs> okay? Come on, I'm back. You look like you look, this is not funny face. I'm back. I know. That's why I'm laughing. Go. <laughs> I'm like, you stop it. Go go to some other countries. Yeah, yeah, mm. no, you're right. Okay? And you stop complaining real fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Depending been, on what country you're in. No. I, I've been to some countries and I'm glad I had that little blue passport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know such. Yeah. So I'm it's, it's, it's all relative. We're we're real. We're in this country. We're real. We don't think we should have to pay for nothing. Yeah. And not, that ain't how it works. Yeah, that's not that I don't think we should get paid. We don't have to pay. Shouldn't have to pay for nothing. I just think we need to get paid more for what we do. Why? Because says who? Because we ain't getting enough. That's why. Says who? That's not. That's says not a reason. Me. That's, that's not. That's not a reason either. <laughs> Mr. My President. Reason. My prerogative. Okay, well, that's no. Nah. Ladies and gentlemen, the mindset. I just think, in relation to of sometimes an the generation. amount of work, I think in relation to sometimes the amount of work that we do for certain things, um, I just think we get rewarded 
on such a subjective scale that the value of what you do isn't always re- does isn't lined up with what you get rewarded well, for. Me, well, I'm, or compensated I'm for. You will. Rich, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking about somebody who I had this conversation with. Rich, here we go. <laughs> we literally get paid. Yeah. To sit our asses in a chair <laughs> and talk in a microphone. But you know why? Because let, we got something to say me that finish, means something. Let me finish the thought. Everybody ain't got that. <laughs> let me finish the thought. <laughs> Can name a few. Because because you already feel your argument crumbling. Oh no, no, which, not yet. Which is why, which I'm is, standing which, on this. Which, <laughs> this is exactly what Donald Trump does. <laughs> I don't he, put he, me in the same he, sentence he jumps, as Donald he, Trump. He ever. does not allow the questioner <laughs> yeah, to finish this, the question. This is me you, just you standing on You already feel your argument crumbling. So now you want to jump in so I don't get to complete. <laughs> Go I'm, ahead. I'm going to let you finish. But I'm going to complete whether you. Go for it. If I, I have to sit on this <laughs> for the day. whole rest of the show. I'm going to complete this point. Go okay? for it. So you can all jump right. in all you want. Go for it. We literally get paid to sit in chairs mm-hmm. in front of a camera and talk into a microphone. Mm-hmm. And somehow we're under the impression, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that all, oh, when, when, when there are people in three quarters of the world yeah. who are doing actual hard labor, sun up to sundown, with blisters and boils. Mm-hmm. That is very true. You know what I'm saying? You're right. They should probably get paid a lot more than you and I. Mm. Probably. Just based upon the amount of work that they're That's doing. my problem too, though. So, I, you know what I'm saying? I think they should. The reason, the reason I came at you the way I did is mm-hmm. because it's, so, it's such an American yeah. way of thinking about things. Yeah. You know? now, now, would I like to get paid more? Hell <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I'm about to have a worship moment. Hold on. I feel it. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to go into tongues right here. Yes, I would. Yeah. But it's not because I think that I deserve, I, I deserve it. The universe owes me. It's not that it owes you. No. <laughs> I just would like it. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot. I would like it. And, and, and of course, I think I bring a certain value. Exactly. You know, and I'm in a certain industry. That's all that I was getting at, though, yeah, is the value but behind it. But you just it. expressed it really American. I did. I did. And it, I just, did. it just worked my last And I last will say that, though, nerves. because it's like, not is, just us sitting in these chairs and talking into a microphone and getting paid for it. This is years of wisdom, years of triumph, years of relationship building, yeah. years of doing things that a lot of people aren't willing to do to be able to be in this position of sitting in this chair talking about No, absolutely in. true. And I, I agree. truth be told, truth I'd be like told. to think that part of the reason that we're sitting in these two chairs is because of one of, the, one of the things that I value, one about myself, but also you as well, our yeah. ability to build and also keep relationships. A lot of people, you can form a relationship with anybody, but to actually be able to build and keep and sustain a relationship over a long period of time is so rare to me in these days that... For yes, me, yes, you yes, introduced yes, me to yes. you introduced I'm me to the person off. that helped us <laughs> make this possible. You off, you go nine down, years you're ago, going down a rabbit hole. nine years ago, though. Don't tell everything. You tell. You I'm tell just saying. <laughs> but if you're we did not, much. but if we did Stop. not, cease, desist, and listen. Look, he's suspended animation. That was good. Are you acting right now? Yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, good. Because here's my point. All right, and I agree with everything you're mm-hmm. saying, by the way. But we make more than teachers. That's the problem. That's my they point. They need to be millionaires, too. We sh- I Damn mean, it. we shouldn't <laughs> make more <laughs> teachers. You know what I'm saying? We all should be millionaires. Uh, okay. Us teachers. I can't. Everybody I can't. that got a brain that actually There's is no, adding value there, to the world. I don't think everybody should be a millionaire. <laughs> all right? First of all, everybody couldn't handle a million dollars. They no, probably would right, ruin right. their lives. And I secondly, that, that different people bring different amounts of value you're right. to, the, to the table. Mm-hmm. Certain things, certain certain. Functions are more valuable than others. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a socialist. Mm-hmm. I'm an egalitarian. But who is, the de- who is the person that determines that? Because it's not just right. one person that determines, all right, this is more valuable than this. Because if that teacher has helped thousands of kids over the last 15 years grow into better people that are actually functioning in society doing better, that's more valuable than anybody making a million dollars just doing something that ain't not in a country, helping nobody. Not in a country that values entertainment exactly. over education. Mm. So who, who determines that? The values, the allegiances mm-hmm. of a culture. Yeah. And then secondarily, an industry. Mm-hmm. Can that change for an entire entity if the, like that? If the values of the country change. Do you think it's possible? 
in America, not in my lifetime. Mm. I'm not going to say no because I, I don't have future knowledge of 100 and years from now. And we've come a long way already. You never know. More importantly, yeah. I don't have future knowledge of 100 years from now. Yeah, you're right. I'm not a pessimist. Mm -hmm. I'm a skeptic. That's the difference. A pessimist, said, a pessimist would have said to you, no, it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. But a pessimist believes that he has knowledge of something he can't he possibly have. Possibly, yeah. I'm a skeptic. I'm saying based upon what I see and what my experiences tell me, I don't think so. Okay. But I'm not going to disclose that, that we might have a different future. I agree. All right? Mm -hmm. So, again, all of that to say. <laughs> Bring it home. Yeah, phew. <laughs> we went a lot of places right there, didn't we? <laughs> All of that to say, Rich Morrow, that the young man, um, I understand what he's feeling. Me too. He, I oh, feel, so well. I feel it too. Every time I open my little... <laughs> taxes no, be gone. My, my little check. Um, but I have to pull myself in, mm -hmm. which is what I tried to model for you. You do. You just, do. Just I'm be messing with you. Pull yourself in and, and don't get wrapped up in, in you know, privilege crazy. Yeah, I take it back to the gratitude because at the end of the day, I don't think, you know, I'm necessarily owed anything. But I do be a, feel, do feel that I've earned But But here's the other thing. Certain things. Because it just came to me. <clears throat> Why not? And I'm not, I'm not judging the parent or anybody in that car. Um... But why not use it as an opportunity to teach that young man? Yeah, they didn't. Uh, about, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't said it yet. Yeah, no. About <laughs> what it means to live in community mm -hmm. and to contribute collectively mm -hmm. to yeah. the betterment of that community. Yeah. That not everything you make should all go to you. Mm. That each of us are responsible for each other. Each other. And, okay. and the money that you lost in that check is feeding someone somewhere else. Mm -hmm. now, of course, some of it's going to places you might not like, but that's part of what it means to live in a country. Mm -hmm. When you live in a country, your, your taxes go to a military mm -hmm. that's doing things you may not like. No. But it's also going to educate children mm -hmm. in the bayou and in Appalachia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's part of what it means to live in a country. We've lost the ability to be citizens, which is probably why I responded the way mm -hmm. I did, because I hear this all the time. People turn being a citizen into being an individual. Yeah. And how the hell are we going to live together in a country? If we're individuals. If, if we don't understand it, I got, I got to give something. It is the United States. Yeah. I got to be willing to give something. You're right. You're right. Democracy, and then we can go. Democracy, put this at the bottom of the screen. Democracy is a negotiation of loves. Mm. It only works because I'm willing to negotiate some of what I love so that you can get some of what you mm -hmm. love mm -hmm. so that I can get more of what I love. Mm -hmm. And we can both be... And we can both be relatively happy. We're mm -hmm. not all going to be totally happy because we all don't agree. And that's life. It's <clears throat> a nego it, that's everything, right? It's everything. It's family, it's marriage, mm -hmm. it's kids. It's a nego that's why families are democratic. Marriages mm -hmm. are democratic. Mm -hmm. Friendships, democratic. Mm -hmm. It's a negotiation of loves, mm -hmm. right? I love, I, I love all of this, but I'm willing mm -hmm. to give up just a little bit of this. For you. For you and for me mm -hmm. to get most of what I want. Absolutely. So what would your slogan be? Um, democracy. A negotiation of love. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I told one of my friends all the time, everything is negotiable. It is. And, you I know, in that. a country like America, it's, it's reigned even more true. And, yeah, if that's going to be your slogan, I'm with it. Vote for Sean. Dr. Sean. This is it? That's the end of the episode? It is. That's why I needed to know that slogan before we get out of here. Do you wow. want to come up with a better one? Or do you want to repeat it one more time so we can put it at the bottom of the screen? Um, recap. Will and Jada, keep going. We love you. Do great things. Love you, Will. Forget about the past. Taxes. We all have to pay it. <coughs> And it helps to create the kind of world, the country we want to live in, even though we don't like it. What else? What else did we talk about? Uh, the little boy. I just mentioned the little boy. I yelled at Rich. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, everybody. It's been an exciting time. We will see you next time on McMillan tomorrow. Vote for Doc. Just don't vote for me, people. I'm not running for anything. <laughs> And I don't, I don't need that kind of heat in my life, okay? <laughs> Everything's negotiable.
see you next time. <laughs>